to end constitutional right and governing laws of a state, the ability to choose one owns destiny. And that you can indeed have a, a build-out plan that depicts the ultimate land uses of the acreage within one's jurisdiction. Now, that's not to say that it's not going to change over time, nor should it be a plan that is so etched in stone that it never could be changed, but I do believe that the ability to do so is there. In fact, there are many communities in Florida that have had zero growth, and there are many communities in Florida that have had zero growth because of their land use laws. St. Petersburg has had no growth. Longboat Key has had no growth. The city of Sanibel has had no growth. I can go on and on and on. There's a lot of examples out there of desirable places where people want to go, where the community has made a decision, this is the land use, and we're, gonna, you know, we're just going to stick with it. Um, it is unfortunate that, that every time that has been attempted in Sarasota, it has, it has failed. Um, Charles brought this map. I have spent 30 years, um, the greatest part of my adult life, um, working on this map and the document that surround it. This is the future land use plan map and the future plan use land map overlay series of Sarasota County. Um, we are constantly saying we don't want to be like Tampa, we don't want to be like Fort Lauderdale, we don't want to be like Miami. Well, the best way not to do, to be like they are, is don't do what they did. Um, and frankly, we are. Not critical of Charles, but critical over the last 20, 30 years of land use planning. We are doing the identical thing yep. that those communities did. So ultimately, people will stop coming to Sarasota. Mm -hmm. It's either going to happen through some sort of, of a planning action, or it's going to happen as a result of the community becoming so despoiled that nobody wants to come here anymore, and the population levels out. There's you know, great numbers you know, to suggest both. This was the plan that I first started working with. I tried to find my big 1981 comprehensive plan, but I couldn't find it. Well, I found it, but it's in a frame, and I didn't want to bring it to the <laughs> frame thing. I have every iteration of this plan framed, and I know it's some, I shouldn't say that, you think I'm sick. <laughs> Anyways, this was an award-winning comprehensive plan, and probably would have been one of the greatest community plans in the history of comprehensive planning in the United States. What it did was recognize the need for compact urban development, uh, transit-oriented development, efficient use of open space, efficient use of transportation, efficient use of utilities, and the need to preserve agriculture, floodplains, and environmentally sensitive lands. This plan can hold 10 times more people than this plan, by virtue of what Bill just said. It's, it's not an artifact of how much development sprawls, but rather how efficiently used the development you have slated for development. This one had a very dense urban core within the city of Sarasota, where Sarasota would have, definitely would have traffic issues. Um, they would definitely have nightlife, and it would be a very, very vibrant place. And just like living next to an airport, if you did not want to live in a vibrant metropolitan area, it would be unwise to locate in a downtown. It also had the same, a similar but a smaller one in Venice, a small hub in and around Sarasota Square Mall, and it also had a very, very large activity center in, in Northport. So, you know, what we, what we unfortunately have done, and, you know, like I said, this is probably goes back to 1980s, um, is we have the continuous erosion of the comprehensive plan so that we are constantly consuming more of our future land use choices for other generations to make. And I think more than anything, that's what bothers me. Um, when, when Jono and I first started these recent hashes of environmentally sensitive lands campaigns, I can't speak for him, but I can speak for myself. And I can say after growing up here and watching the consumption of land, it became very, very clear to me that he and I, were we to live to be 85 years of age, we will have seen every single environmental land use decision made. There will be no more to make because everything will either be in conservation preservation or it will be developed or slated for development. That's how close we are in Sarasota County because that's how much of the environmentally sensitive lands that we have left. Most of them have been lost to agriculture. I think we should be doing the same thing for agriculture because I believe that there's, um, as Bill does, um, we may not recognize it now, 
but having the ability to raise our own food without you know, uh, transportation as a cost and things like that <laughs> is going to be an asset in, in, in community planning. But no, so I do believe that we could, in fact, have some more control over our destiny. Keeping home prices down is always going to be um, a difficult task to do, as I explained um, before. Um, I'm not a socialist. Um, you know, I, I do believe in limits of government. But I also believe that there is um, costs associated with development. And as I said before, one of those costs is making sure that there are homes left in living quarters, not homes or homes, but not necessarily houses, in those those lower price ranges. Um, you know, when do we stop? You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, frankly, I wish you know we would have um, had some. Uh, some, some of the comprehensive plan changes that I saw in the, in the mid 70s were some of the uh, um, were some of the, the tragic or excuse me the mid 80s those were some of the most tragic ones where we did away with the concentric urban service area boundaries and went to one that stretched all the way up and down the coast um, that is a clear reflection of what they did in Miami Dade and Fort Lauderdale um, so I just hope that we recognize it now that we don't continue along the same plat that they've but, but, but speak to the reason that they those, that it eroded and changed. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, what is being overlooked here is the diversification of the economy. Right now, far Sarasota's leading export product for our kids. If they graduate, they can't find decent paying jobs. The nature of our economy is generating low wage service jobs. And the basic problem is because we haven't been able to attract and encourage clean light industry coming into this area. And over the last 10 years, about 2,500 acres of land that was zoned NEC for light industry has been changed to residential and commercial. And when you zone something from, from industry to residential, you get a one-ton economic shot. Yes, the houses get built, people have jobs. But when you have clean light industry, what you get there is high paying jobs for years and generations to come. And what is an urgent need by the county is to take a look at what the remaining inventories of NEC land is and start looking at how they can acquire some sort of a central hub that's going to attract clean light industry that can help reverse this terrible problem of affordable housing. Because if people have decent jobs, they can afford to buy the houses. Tell people what you do, Kevin. I'm a manufacturer and uh, we produce shade structures, which we distribute throughout the entire United States. We're also involved with electric vehicle charging stations. We have a federal government contract to provide charging stations for the federal fleet, federal GSA fleet throughout the United States. Thank you. Uh, Dan, in, uh, in recent times, the Sarasota County Commission has gutted the Sarasota 2050 plan to allow standard urban sprawl out east has uh, agreed last year unanimously by consensus to keep the 50% cut in transportation impact fees 